Welcome to weekly market meeting, 21st August 2019. I'm Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. Before I begin, let's go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. I will use this session for reviewing the global as well as the USA market and then look for trading opportunities using bottom-up analysis. Q&A is throughout the session. I'm not a big fan of PowerPoints. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me move to live system. I begin the global market analysis with Australian index AXJO. I'm analyzing it using the standard weekly on the left and daily on the right Q chart template. Backdrop is the weekly chart template and hop on or entry is the daily chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this template, in only a few seconds, you may decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right end. AXJO dropped for two weeks. One week ago, it hit the weekly memory trend line support. We would expect price to bounce up from there and that happened this week. The backdrop candle color in the weekly chart is remaining bearish. In the daily chart, it is currently falling down with lower highs and lower lows. It is in a downtrend. Price is close to the lower boundary level. That is an area where we would not like to initiate new short and it is in a downtrend. Therefore, we will not take any long trade either. Australian market was in an uptrend for a long time. Now for swing trading purpose, it is in a downtrend. Let's see what is the scenario with the China market. China is always in the news nowadays because of the trade issues between the USA and China. Let's look at the CSI 300 China index. And sometimes if, if I cannot load the data for a particular index, I can try the alternate index, dot CSI 500. Okay, I'm having some issue, but this time I was smarter. I have downloaded the data. Therefore, I can open the data from the local file. This is CSI 300. In the weekly chart, this week price went up. The candle color turned cyan bullish and it is very close to the weekly memory resistance line. We'll expect 
price to come down from here. Therefore, you are not going to look for any long trade. In the daily also, there are multiple memory resistance lines. Price went there a few days ago and for last two days, it is moving in very narrow range bars. The weekly is bullish in color. If the daily can break out of the memory resistance lines, then you may look for a long trade in the China market. What about Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong market? Let me load the local data. Hong Kong market here also price is going down in the weekly chart last week it displayed a bullish shape candle though the color was bearish and this week it is displaying a bullish headwind signal in the daily chart price dropped sharply few days ago it opened with a gap up and then moved higher at close since then it is moving sideways for last two days similar to the china market if it can break out of the high of the gap up day then it may give a breakout long trade setup that is using the technique of entering a long trade when price goes above the high of a breakout candle when price goes above the high of a gap up candle in that case, the stop will be just below the gap up candle. Right now, there is no trade set up in HSI. Both China and Hong Kong market dropped rapidly and then recovered somewhat. It is not easy to find trades in this situation. There will not be any trend following trade. You may take out a you may take a breakout trade. If that opportunity comes that is price goes above the high of this gap up day india market was going down let me open the local symbol and it is continuing to go down displayed the bearish headwind in the weekly chart at the very top in the daily chart as well the weekly backdrop candle color is bearish for many weeks. This week's color and shape is bearish. I mentioned during the webinars that we had a go with flow short trade setup on this magenta candle. Partial profit would be booked at the lower boundary and the remaining position is still being held. That is how we can book profit, take some money off the table and then let profit run at the same time. There is no reason to exit the remaining position because it is continuing to go down. Today's candle color and shape both are bearish. Where is the stop loss, trailing stop loss? If we apply the protection signal, the stop level template, that will show us where is the stop level. Let me open the local data again. Here the cyan dots represent 
the short position stop so when we entered the short trade on this day our initial stop would be at this level or this dot level we booked partial profit around this point and then we could move the stop as a trailing stop in fact we were stopped out on this day so we are out of this short position now on this day so we entered the trade at this price level partial profit was booked at this point and the remaining position was stopped out using trailing stop at this point so we got large profit on the initial position and even larger profit on the remaining position right now there is no trade setup let's look at the FTSE market during webinars I sometimes have issue with connectivity let me open the local data that will be as of yesterday's data because the UK market may not be closed yet for the Asian markets, they closed. Therefore, the local data is as of today's close, Wednesday's close. FTSE market, let me check the date, as of 20th August, as of yesterday's close. The weekly is bearish, was bearish and is bearish. The weekly candle color and shape for this week, both are bearish. Daily it is going down, lower high, lower low. Price is close to the lower boundary. It is in a downtrend, but to extend it to initiate a short trade now. It is bearish. Let's look at the USA market. For that, I will switch from Q Global to QLE. This is S&P 500 ETF, SPY. SPY displayed bearish headwind at the very top in the weekly as well as in the daily charts. Then price drop. Previous two weeks, we had long lower tail candles. Candles were indecisive as I mentioned in the weekly market roundup also. In the weekly roundup, I mentioned that if price can go out of this triangle pattern, then only we may look for a trade in the breakout direction. Two days ago, it broke out in the daily chart. The candle shape was indecisive. Yesterday, price drop came back below the memory resistance line and today opened with a gap up again. If it can go above the high of this candle, the gap up candle two days ago then you may consider taking a long trade in that case the stop will be below this candle below yesterday's candle this chart is somewhat similar to the hong kong and the china market where price dropped then stabilized then went up there was a gap up day and you may see if price can go above the high of the gap up day. That is SPY. Let's look at QQQ. This is looking stronger. Why? Because SPY, the weekly candle color was bearish. Here the candle color is bullish now. Otherwise, the pattern is similar. It had indecisive shape candle one week ago. It was inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart, broke out. And in fact, today it is going above the high of the gap up day that came two days ago. This is stronger than SPY. So if you had to take a long trade, breakout long trade in one of the market ETFs, QQQ is a better choice between SPY and QQQ. 
let's check Taya. Daya is also recovering. However, the weekly candle color is still bearish. Therefore, QQQ remains the strongest. Here also, today's price is going above the high of this gap up day that happened two days ago. It may give a long trade setup today. In fact, if you looked at the intraday fine tune template, you might take a long position already in QQQ. I will look at the intraday chart of QQQ. Before that, let me look at the IWM chart, Russell 2000 ETF. This was and is continuing to remain the weakest one. The weekly candle color is remaining bearish. It also gapped up two days ago. Today it is yet to go above the high of that gap up day. Therefore, among all the four market ETFs, QQQ is the strongest. And if I look at the intraday chart, let me first switch to daily interval, draw a line at the high of the gap up day then change to fine tune interval that is five minute i use five minute for morning session 10 minute for afternoon session you can see that after market open the early range high and early range low lines form the gap up days high was this level in fact this green level And when price went above the early range high, you could take a long trade in QQQ. If you did that, that will be an entry using five minute chart interval. And for the day, the stop will be below early range low. That is the entry technique I would use. If I am bullish in an instrument, one of the entry techniques using intraday chart is to use early range breakout provided the range is narrow, which is true today. Now today is of course a news day at 2 p.m. There is some central bank report coming out. On news days, it may not be safe to take a trade before the news is out. And 2 p.m. is in the afternoon session. Therefore, though this is the usual technique today because of the 2 p.m. news, I was not going to take the trade. You may also avoid taking any trade until after the news is out. Usually I don't talk about news and I don't trade based on news except for major events and things related to central bank. Sometimes they don't result in any market moves but sometimes they can result in major market move. Today there is a major event, news, not an event but news. Some report will be out at 2 p.m. So I will not enter any new trade today. That was a review of the global markets and the USA market. Let me look at the sector industry rotation to see how they are doing. Yesterday, all the sectors were down. Today, all the sectors are up, but the status is off. Let me play it to save bandwidth when running the webinar. I switch the status to off. Now I started playing it. So it is going to connect to Thomson Reuters. That is definitive now and get all the data. It is updating the data. Let's see how many sectors are open. Yes, all the 11 sectors are open. That is in real time, we can see. That is showing up, down, up, down move. Two days ago, it was almost, I think all, all sectors were up. Yesterday, all sectors were down. Today, as of now, almost midday, all sectors are up again. Up, down, up. 
is it difficult to trade in the market? Not really. Some people say it is difficult to trade in the market. Not so if we ignore the news. The secret of successful trading to a large extent is not listening to news or not letting it influence our trading. If we use the 360 degrees analysis and wait for a proper signal, ignore the news, then it is not difficult to trade. What would happen? We didn't have any good trade setup anyway. Therefore, we will not be in the market. Not difficult. The difficult part is the discipline. Let's see if we can find some trade setup. Though, as I mentioned, we will not like to enter any trade because at 2 p.m. there is a news. There are many ways we can look for trades, either from the strongest sectors. Let's look at the strongest sectors. Today, consumer discretionary industrials, they are strongest. Energy is in the middle. Consumer staple utilities, the defensive sectors are the weakest. That is bullish for the market. Consumer discretionary is at the top. And it was weak for a long time. We could drill down. We will like to look for buy setups only in the strongest sectors. But sector level tends to be very strong. Uh, not strong, <laughs> sector level tends to be very broad. Let's drill down to the industry level and find the strongest industries. I'm going to look for long setup because the market is looking bullish. These are the strongest industries. Let me look at the top 10. And excellent, isn't it? Out of top 10 from the sector column, you can see nine are in consumer discretionary. No wonder consumer discretionary is the strongest sector. Doesn't happen always like this. Nine out of 10 in consumer discretionary. That is very bullish, isn't it? <laughs> I think the data talks for itself. Some of the companies in these industries announced results and they went up, but that alone is not enough to bring nine of the 10 sectors, nine of the 10 best industries in a single sector. There may be more underlying strength than just those having great earnings or target having great earnings. Several of these industries were weak earlier. The score was in magenta color. This is not exactly bottom-up analysis, but that is fine. It looks interesting. Let me look at the nine consumer discretionary industries that are at the top and drill down. We have a large number of stocks. Let's look at the stocks that went up most today. And I'm going to select the ones and send it to QLIT, that is Trade Station. Let me choose the ones that are among the top 20% in this list. These are highlighted by bold case. You could also decide based on percentage, the ones that are up by at least 2%. Let me do that. The ones that are up by at least 2% as of now. I click the chart icon to get the symbols and I'm going to put them in Q sonar. It is going to look at all the stocks in real time and lit up the cells showing if there is a possible trade setup. Market is bullish, so I'm going to look for long setup. Then I looked into the strongest industries. Surprisingly, nine of the 10 strongest industries were in the same sector, consumer discretionary. Then I looked at its stocks, picked up only those having at least 2% move as of now. And now I'm going to focus on the stocks having maximum green or cyan color sales in these columns like false move, breakout, touch, bounce, headwind box, go with flow, u turn pressure activity, extreme, etc. Let me 
do the analysis one by one. Let me look for breakouts. One, two, three, four, five, this. Seven stocks are breaking out today. Out of them, some are breaking out with very high percentage, six percentage plus. Lows is up by 9.7%. And some of them are also giving go with flow. That is possible trend following long trend. And one of them has high pressure here. So let me look at that. Urban Outfitter, UBN. They are linked. Therefore, when I click on the symbol, it will come to the at a glance chart. It is looking bullish, but not ready yet for my taking a long trade. The weekly has displayed a bullish headwind signal. That is good. Weekly candle color shape or bullish, that is good. What is not ready yet is it has not cleared the memory resistance in weekly and daily. Therefore, I may add it to watch list, but not going to take it right now. When I find that, I go to sonar, I delete the symbol that saves processing power. Let me look at breakout, we go with flow. Let's me look at them. This one, FL, foot locker. Foot locker is better, isn't it? It is clearing the memory resistance in weekly and at least clearing this memory resistance. The next resistance is some distance away, which is also at the watermark pivot resistance. If at the end of the day it ends bullish, then it will give a long setup today. That is how using live data, live sector industry analysis, we can find trade setups easily. Is it a good trade setup? So far it looks like that because the stop will be just below this recent low. That is very narrow stop. If we look at the data in more detail, we can see there was a high pressure and U-turn day here on this yellow candle that also gave a bull release signal. After that, it could go above this watermark support, thereby creating a false downside breakout. And now it is breaking out again today. There is no reason to think that trading is difficult so long as we follow a disciplined approach. So Foot Locker looks good. When that happens, let me move it to the top, delete Foot Locker. So I am going to keep an eye on Foot Locker. What about Nike, another shoe company? Both are in the same industry, Foot Locker. Not exactly say Foot Locker sells shoes, Nike makes shoes. Nike, not so interesting for me because the weekly color is not bullish yet. Very erratic in the daily chart, sharp down move, then recovering, but the weekly is not ready yet. Between Foot Locker and Nike, I like Foot Locker. What about looking at their fundamentals? Let me do that analysis now. Foot locker is FL. I'm going to use the peer analysis tool, foot locker and NKE Nike. Because I know the two symbols in this case, I am typing the two symbols and it is retrieving the data. It has updated the data, retrieved all the data from Thomson Reuters, calculated vital statistics. Let me look at them. They are not exactly in the same industry. Foot Locker sells shoes, they are in apparel retail industry, and Nike makes shoes footwear industry. Now, in terms of Fundamentals, which one is better? Doesn't take a second, isn't it? Foot locker in terms of valuation is better. 
in terms of earnings growth in the latest quarter, earnings growth in the latest year, even the previous quarter earnings growth is looking better. So in terms of both valuation and earnings growth, even in terms of dividend, Foot Locker is looking better. The chart was also better for Foot Locker. Therefore, we will choose Foot Locker based on objective analysis. Trading doesn't have to be difficult. Let me go back to Sonar. When I find two stocks and one is not good. I'm going to delete that. Let me look at this stuff. ANF. This is also looking better, but not yet out of the memory resistance in the daily chart. Therefore, I will wait. If it can clear the memory resistance in the daily chart, ANF may give a good buying opportunity. You can see it found support in the weekly memory that is coming from far, far away. Those are very robust supports out of nowhere. If you don't have the memory support, probably you don't know. In this case, it happened to have one watermark support also. That is good. It has two supports. One is pivot support, watermark support, and also trend line support coming from very far away, even in the weekly chart. Weekly candle is turning bullish in color and shape. Only thing I will wait for is for the daily to break out of the trend line. Industry is strong, that we know. What about its fundamentals? ANF. We can go to our list of stocks that we found in QH. That is ANF. ANF, I'm going to click this peer analysis button in a different color, meaning it will take me to a different application, which is the peer analysis application. So from industry rotation analysis, I am now able to jump into stock peer analysis using messaging. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> I'm loving the queue systems. If it gives server side error, I have to pause and play again. That error comes when Thomson Reuters gives an error to the requests we are sending to it. It is retrieving the PRs and after that, it will calculate vital statistics for all the PRs. Retrieving data for all these stocks, 24 PRs it has found in apparel retail industry. Then it will populate this snapshot as well. We can see instantly ANF has great valuation. Earnings quality is good. It has a short squeeze potential and quarterly earnings is improving very well from minus 2.2% one quarter ago to 48% positive earnings growth in the latest quarter. So that is looking good. We don't have to go to the peer analysis, but why not? It takes only a click. Why I like to do that is because we started with ANF, but we may end up buying something else if we look at the peer stocks. And I can see there are many undervalued stocks, the ones with valuation in cyan color, and I can apply the smart filter to look at only them. Why I'm looking at undervalued stocks? Because this industry, and by the way, if I want to look at the industry of one of these stocks, now I can go to the industry rotation analysis. Again, this different color, non-black is actually orange color, tells it is going to take me to another application that will check the industry rank in real time, scorecard in real time. So I can check the industry.
April return. It was weak for a long time. And only today in real time, we can see the color has turned sad. One of the strongest. Very, very strong today. Because it was weak for a long time, I'm going to look for undervalued stocks. And there are multiple undervalued stocks. Let me look at the ones which are having only solid earnings quality. I'm left with this. Let me also look for the ones which has a short squeeze potential. Left with this. And I'm going to look for stocks which are having increasing earnings growth in the latest quarter. I will use the smart filter here. I'm left with these stocks. ANF is one of them that we already saw. Let me look at the other stocks. Here I have set up the technical trading system to Q Global. So in Q Global, let me set it to the daily chart. So it's easier to open multiple symbols. I can highlight the symbols in any place actually. I can highlight here also and click on the chart. It will open the chart using the template we have set. And using the template instantly, I can decide it is in a downtrend. There is no trade setup here. Also, no trade setup in this stock, DBI. Chicos, no, no trade setup because there is a memory resistance nearby. Shoe Carnivai, no, DBI, back to DBI. So we didn't find any trade setup. Looking at all of them, ANF looks best in this industry. No, not ANF, ANF has to break the letter. What was that? Foot locker, is it? Locker. Applying the at a glance template again. If the daily ends with a bullish shape, bullish color, then we'll have a long trade setup in Foot Locker. This is how you can combine the industry strength in real time with fundamental strength, also in real time, and technical strength and Q trade setups that are based on unambiguous checklist to find trade setups in any market condition. If we found a trade setup now, it is too early to take the trade for swing trading. The signals are to be confirmed near market close. In Q technique, we don't have to wait for next day. We can take the trade at or near market close. US market closes at 4 p.m. So at 3.30, I can start my analysis. 30 minutes is enough, as I showed today also. Then if everything is meeting the checklist conditions in terms of technical setup, which are available from the trade setup here menu on our website, then you can enter the trade. Let's look at the worst performing industries. Not many today, isn't it? 13. Only 13. And if we look at the 10 worst performing industries, they are in consumer staples, healthcare, communications, utilities. Not, not, not necessarily in defensive sectors. It's a mixture. Consumer staples are, consumer staples is there for three times. So you can say it is more defensive. Utilities is also there, but there are also industries like materials, communication services. If we are looking for short setup, my favorite is to look for the ones which were strong for a long time. So water utilities will be one of them. Let me drill down. There is only one stock that is overvalued. Let me look at this chart. A W R.
the weekly is still loading, but from the daily, I can see there is no trade setup. It is in an uptrend. So the only possible trade setups are the reversal setups, headwind, but there is no headwind signal, box, but there is no pivot level, bounce, but there is no memory resistance. Therefore, I know even before the weekly loaded that there is no trade setup in this stock. You may carry out similar analysis and find out other trade setups. The last thing I may do, let me look for any headwind signal coming today. No, today there is no headwind signal. Let me see if there is any U-turn pressure. KSS and TLRD, both are in apparel retail. Sorry, not apparel retail. One is department stores, one is apparel retail. KSS. Pressure U-turn is also useful because it means very bearish pressure followed immediately by bullish pressure. We may look for trade setups there. Here we don't have a trade setup. It has to break out of this memory resistance. You may set an alert for that. If KSS breaks out of this memory resistance, which is around 50, then you may look for a proper trade setup. Last talk I want to look at is TLRD. This is also looking about to be ready for a buy. Not ready yet. There are two memory resistance lines. Why it is interesting is because it has bullish headwind in the weekly, bullish headwind in the daily. However, we will not enter a trade unless this memory resistance is broken. And by the time that is broken, we'll have another resistance nearby. So in this case, I will wait for the second memory resistance to be broken and then wait for a proper Q trade setup. Let me end today's session here. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next live webinar. Have a great week and trade profitably.